And we're back to going through the exorcism exercises using JavaScript. This is the high scoreboard exercise. It uses objects, or it introduces you to objects. Read through it yourself if you aren't familiar with it. And we'll dive right in. Task 1, we want to create a new high score board. So we are right here in this function. And we've got two parameters. We've got the string the best ever. And a number is going to be connected to it, which is given right here. So our function should return these values and, and therefore create a new object. The way to do it is to use return and then these curly brackets and then add your two values. So the best ever underscore which is connected to it. I'll just copy paste it so that I don't miss a zero or something. And you can read about that right here where it says creating an object. But I've mispositioned the semicolon right here. In line 11, let me delete that. I go one step down. I'll place it in line 12 and now it should work. So again, this function helps us creating a new object, which is called the scoreboard in the future tasks. We want to add players or we want to create a function that adds players to this new object. We've got the three parameters, scoreboard, the object, player, and score. And in the end, we want to return the scoreboard, so we can already write that. It's this line right here. It says we want to return the updated scoreboard. So we've got that solved. Let us check the other ones right here. So what we need is the scoreboard object. And afterwards, we want to use our player and score and add it to it. The string is the player. So we'll put it right here and we want to add the score to it right there. So our function now adds a player which has a certain score to our object. Let's go to task 3. We can also remove elements from our object, in this case players. And again we'll use the scoreboard object and in the end we want to return the updated scoreboard. So I can directly write return scoreboard again and before it we want to update it in this case by removing a player. So can we do that? Well, we'll simply use the scoreboard object, then use player, which is the key, and we need the keyword delete in front of it to make sure that we are deleting this player from our object. So right here in the instructions it is explained. We can run the test and it should be all fine if I haven't done any typos. Let's go to task 4. We want to increase a player score by a given score. In this case we want to use the parameter points for that. So you can see that in the example the score of each player is updated when we use that function.
Let's go to it. In the end we want to return the updated score, so once again we we'll use return scoreboard. And before it we want to add the points, so we need yet again our scoreboard object. And then we want to have scoreboard plus the points. So this is the way you would write it, for example, for a variable. We've done that in previous exercises. And you also know that we can simply delete this part and add the plus sign before the equal sign, which is the same. And we want to set it, or we want to increase the points for a given player. So we use this parameter right here for our scoreboard object. And it's the key in the instruction examples. So we're good here. Let's jump to task 5. There's a Monday bonus of 100 additional points. So every player that's part of our object, the scoreboard will get plus 100 points. In the example, you can see that 44 to 144, then 500 to 639 and so forth. In the end, we'll return the updated scoreboard. So once again, return scoreboard and before it, we want to add it to each and every player. So we'll need a loop for an object and it's explained right here with the for and in loop. Let us just write it like it is in the example. So for then the condition and the curly brackets. Instead of the condition we need let key in object. And inside of it we want to add our points and we've already created a function for that in the previous task so we can just use it right here update score i'll copy it and i'll paste it into my loop but we'll have to be careful because in this task we've used points and now we want to use specific points which is 100 so we don't use a parameter here instead we'll replace it with 100 and now we have to change the condition. In this case, our object is the scoreboard. And the key is yet again our player. And now it should work. So this for loop cycles through the object, finds the player, and then adds 100 to the score that's attached to each and every player. And afterwards, it's going to return the updated scoreboard, obviously. Let me run the test. And it was fine. Maybe I'll add a semicolon right here. It's always a good idea to do that, even though the code has worked properly without it. Let's go to task six. And I think that this is not a good explanation for it. If it wasn't for me having a little bit more knowledge about coding, I wouldn't have managed to do that with just the explanations. So maybe there are future exercises on exorcism that explain it way better. In this case, we've got the parents object. And the score needs to be normalized with the function normalized in the example. And we want to do something equal here. So we want to return a normalized score. We need the normalized function for it. And in this case, we'll use the params right here. And then dot score. So within the params, we want to find the score and then normalize that. This is what this code line does until now. And before it, we need the params dot and then the normalize function. So this is the way to solve it. I haven't gone through the entire catalog on exorcism. Maybe there are better exercises that explain it a little bit more in depth in the future. We'll check it out. But I've planned to make specific JavaScript videos anyway, in which I'm going to go over functions and all of this stuff in detail. So don't worry too much if you haven't gotten around the last task here. But I hope this video was helpful in general. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.